Alliance Burn Barrel of the Apocalypse. Jesse Hubbard, welcome to the Burn Barrel of the Apocalypse. Dino Tripodis is here. I understand you two know each other pretty well as authors of cocktail books, both of you. I thought I'd get you together. And Dino goes, oh, I know Jesse for a long time. He knows everybody. That's not even the reason we've gotten together in the past, though. This just happens to be a happy coincidence now that because I remember when he was telling me he was getting ready to write this book. And I'm like, go for it, man. The idea was great. The concept was great from the get go. And now here it is completed. I appreciate that. You definitely helped uh, give me some great guidance when it came to putting this together. So it's cool. It's cool that we're guidance. here. Yes, I just you told did. You to do it. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I said, do Don't it. downplay it. So yours was a holiday themed. Mine was cocktail. mine was more humorous. This is actually yeah. This you know, is uh, this has got. You can make these. You can make mine too, but I don't suggest it <laughs> because I in mine I have a disclaimer that I am not a bartender, and I, I I echo that sentiment throughout the entire book. But you are. You're a master, man. You're like. Oh, thanks, man. Well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying anything that 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 people don't already know. Well, we'll see about that. You're going to make us a drink here at the end. I don't think you've ever made me a drink before, Jesse, so we'll see. You'll be the judge. Oh, you're in for a treat. <laughs> so this is a great idea. We're going, to get, we're going to circle back to this, but I find your life as fascinating as Dino's. I mean, Dino has lived so many lives, as we know. You were once a train conductor. It's true, yeah. I've never, I don't think I've ever known anyone who was in that line of work. Now you do. You can say that you do now. Fascinating. As we were talking before we started, that's like the kind of job you dream of as a kid. Like, I want to be a ball player or a, or a rock star or a train conductor. Yeah. So you actually were one. Yeah, probably the least exciting of the three that you just mentioned. But, yeah, I did it. You know, So it was really fun. I did it for a while when I was in school and come from a long line of... Uh, you know, railroad uh, family members, you know, going my, back to going back to my great grandfather. Really? Yeah. So, so that would have been when when he did it. I mean, it was I don't even know the, the time frame, but it was back in the days when it was still the Wild West out there. I know that. I mean, so my, my grandfather did it probably back wow. in the 50s and 60s. So my great grandfather would have been before that. You know, so they would have had like the the romantic notion of the 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 hobo jumping the train. Yeah, you know, like what drink, did they drink do? a little flask or something yeah. and get you know, hop on the rails. Yeah. Did you have train jumpers when you were doing it? No, no, oh, not not, not that I ever saw. Yeah, it was unfortunate. I always wanted to to like meet a a, a train jumping hobo, but it never happened. <laughs> huh? So I imagine they had stories like that. Though, yeah, right? yeah, it was pretty cool. It was yeah. pretty cool. You just I grew up with it. It was the norm. So how do you become a train conductor? You have to do you go to some sort of school? You, you do, you do. I had to go down to uh, McDonough, Georgia, and had to go down there for a while and learn basically everything from the proper way to hold on to the to the. You see, like the the ladders on the side of the train cars. Yeah. yeah the proper way to hold on to those because there's a certain way you have to do it. I remember the first day I go down there, they have everybody hold on to these these ladders on a mock, you know, mock situation, and you have to signal with your other hand the different train signals. If you fell off the, the ladder, they sent you home immediately. They won. Oh, wow. They won. They took it very seriously. Very seriously. You want to get one shot at it? You fall off the ladder, you're done? They, they let you come back to the school another time and try it again. But you got two tries total. So wow. that, that really psyched everybody out leading up to it. So we're all at home, hanging on the ladders, practicing, you know what I mean? We don't know what the signals were. We're just waving our hands around to get used and to the field. if you fail, you watch, did you see anyone fail and I did. watch out? I saw two people. Yeah, one guy and one girl. Oh. Yeah, it was, un well, it was unfortunate. My, my brother-in-law was an Air Force reconnaissance pilot, mm -hmm. and it, you would wash out for anything in that. This sounds like the same thing. The, it was interesting because I was never in the military, but a lot of the management were in the military and they they said that they wanted to treat it as such it was it was my little my little brush with it my little taste with uh kind of that type of discipline it was interesting so the trains go by down there could you could you climb aboard one right now and 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 get it going and, and commandeer it i mean i could i could uh couple the cars together and you know like break them up and take that apart but i i never i couldn't run the train that wasn't what i that wasn't what i did but uh, my brother could do that that's what he yeah. does currently yeah wow. yeah so, uh, but that wasn't really conducive to being a college student. Was it? No, it was. <laughs> <laughs> was it? Was it a big pickup line at the bars? It was really one or the other, and I ultimately chose neither. <laughs> <laughs> so. I would train conductor. Okay. Wow, yes. Yeah. That yeah right. Something. It's like, okay. So you were done with that, mm -hmm. and you'd also, and this kind of leads us to the book. When you were in junior high and middle school, you caught the punk rock bug. Caught the caught that bug. I was riding that wave, yeah. And you were in bands. <laughs> yeah. Did you start the bands or did you join them? Or? We 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 started bands. I mean, you know, 
bands. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? We we never did anything much, and uh, we were terrible all along the way. So. What were some of the names? You remember? Um, <laughs> the the one that got the most steam. Uh, <laughs> we, we we called ourselves Factory Life. Okay, that's not bad. Because <laughs> we, we were thinking, yeah, like the blue collar Bruce Springsteen vibe. You know yeah. what I mean? We were knuckleheads. It, they were terrible. We were terrible. Did you have originals? Um, if you want to call them that, basically everything was a riff on some sort of like Black Flag or Ramon song or oh, something like that. That's all right. That's fun. We're ripping them off big time. Yeah. Yeah. So mostly what, covers. What What was it, What was your go-to cover? Um, Search and Destroy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was, to this day, you know, like I don't play like I used to, but to this day, it's still one of my favorites when I pick it up. What'd you play? I play guitar. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, so like, you still playing it? A little bit, not yeah. so much. You know, I'm living the suburban life these days, but you yeah. know, every once in a while, I'll pick it up and uh, just aggravate my wife. Is it? Is, <laughs> is she at all impressed at any point with, with the fact that you used to be in a band? I don't think she cares at all. <laughs> <laughs> she, she always says it's the good thing that we met when we did. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear that. There's nothing you can do that your wife is going to be impressed by. You know, I was a train conductor. I'm impressed by that. You know, she's like, eh, whatever. Uh, I was in bands. Okay. That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's hard. That's the toughest audience. I know, I know. Toughest. At audience. least, well, that's kind of also good because now you know she loves you for who you are. Who you are. She likes me for who me. you that's are. True. What you are. That's true. Not what you've done in the past. That's right. That's right. You don't have no laurels to rest on. You can only create laurels to, you know, further well, your relationship. She often says that she never thought she would end up with a guy with tattoos and a beard. Yeah. So I know that at the very end of the day, at least I'm not just a type. Right. Right. So there's that. I take there's that. that. What does she do? So she she works from home for a, a company called Humana. Uh-huh. So so she's like nine to five, the complete opposite schedule of what I'm oh, on. Oh man! But it's we, nice because she has a lot in common. My wife yeah. has a real job too. Yeah. Like she's an adult. <laughs> she's a fully grown adult human she's a person that takes yeah. care of things yeah. and is responsible. Yeah. And I'm like a barely functioning. How about person. that? It's right? always good to have one of those in 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 the in the domestic situation. I had the, the bill the, paying the, taken yeah. away from me a long time ago because you would it's forget to pay best. the electric bill and yeah. then you turn it off. Yeah. Like what? It's what? That's I, not good. You didn't? I go. I forgot. That's it. You're done. <laughs> You know? That sounds familiar. She, she's going to hear this and be like, yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Well, we're creative people, right? It takes one utility to be shut off for you to lose. That's it. That's you know, it. it just takes one. Oh, well, you know, we, we all have our strengths and weaknesses. And your strength, one of your many strengths, is uh, you are not only a, a, a bartender, you are a renowned, like, top 100 bartender it says so right here in the book yes he is yeah so it was the um they do it yearly it's called the the diageo world class um uh, bartender competition and people from all over the world enter this competition and they pick the they pick their top 100 in each country uh, they didn't do it this year because of the uh, the pandemic but i look forward to doing it again yeah. i want to get top 50 i think i want to try for top you're 50. there you're there you man. know what i mean so what training have you had and did you go to school for that or you just no i went i went to school uh when i was in school i went to school to actually be in radio and i, I worked in radio once upon a time in a past life and i started bartending while i was doing that to make ends meet uh because i was working in new york it was so expensive and, you know, Dino knows this story, but I started bartending on the side and uh, I started as a server and I just really started bugging the bartenders. Hey, how do you make that? Why'd you do that? You know, hanging out after the after the bar would close, asking questions. I'd pick up bar back shifts and just learn that way. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in doing it, um, you know, doing it the old fashioned way and really just kind of picking up that information from people as opposed to going to a school. Right. Because at the end of the day you're not going to learn how to handle a bar full of people who want their drink now at bartending school. You make the cocktails, but you can also watch videos on, online, read books, befriend a bartender, and ask questions. And, and, you know, I always try to pass along any knowledge I may have gained over the years to anybody who's up and coming and trying to learn the, the trade, because that's how I did it. So I try to pay it forward. Yeah, he's got books. He's got books. Re- like, uh, like, like if you were uh, a chemist, mm-hmm. okay, you would have – Chemistry books right. at home with, uh, yeah. well, he's got books at home with with ingredients and 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 what and what this flower does and what this plant can do and right. what this. I mean, it's amazing and, and all the different. What's the the with all the different herbs and and, and things that you can botanicals, do botanicals, yeah. botanicals, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, books that, that where you're constantly, he's constantly going through and finding like ways to create something different and 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 and, and new. I try, man, because I feel like. You gotta stay on on the top of things. You know, what's the new cutting edge technique? What's going on? 
and you, you want to develop your signature style in this industry and kind of what you do and what you're known for, but also you want to stay stay in this position where you're learning. You want to keep bettering yourself because the moment that you think that you know it all, you're going to get passed by uh, and you're going to be left in the dust. You know what I mean? You're going to be one of those old bartenders that says, I used to know how to do this. But, you know, you want to, you want to be because you want to be on top of what's happening now because there's a whole new group of, of kids that are coming up that are 21, 22, 23, and they're hungry. You know what I mean? They're hungry, you know, and they, they, want, they want to take, the, you know, the next step to get somewhere. But that being said, I'm going to help them the best I can, sure. but I still want to know what's going on. Who were you working for in radio in New York? Uh, CBS. Really? What yeah. station? It started off at K- as K-Rock. And no then, kidding? Yeah, so I started doing, when it was K-Rock, I was just in promotions, uh, working my way up, and then it turned into Now FM, uh, and then I got on air with Now FM, um, but it wasn't as much fun. You know what I mean? It, was, it turned into a real job all of a sudden, and, uh, but I really enjoyed myself out there. Uh, but I, I went out there for K-Rock because I really wanted to be on the air for K-Rock. That was my dream. Did you? Were you there when Howard Stern was there? No, it was Opie and Anthony. Oh, I'm Opie. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I but I did That's but funny. I did get to work out of uh, Stern's office from time to time, which was really cool. Huh. You know, and uh, that was neat. And then I got to go into the a studio. Interesting life you've had. It's it's been it's been weird. Yeah. And I you're not even you're, forty yet. Not, not yet. Still in my thirties. You're a train conductor yeah. who worked in New York radio. You know how hard it is to get a radio gig in New York City. It took some doing. Yeah. It's that's a meat grinder there. It was it a was a blast. Pressure. It was a lot of pressure. What show did you it do? It was a lot of pr- so I was so we had a um, a DJ from Detroit. His name was Tic Tac, and uh, he was did, that uh, his given name or this is a Christian name? Yes. Okay. Yes, Tic Tac, Tic Tac Reynolds. Um, so we <laughs> Tic Tac Reynolds. We uh, I, I was part of a. Um, a uh, show there he did on the uh, the afternoons. It was called the the Freak Show. It was like you know it was like top forty radio that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, so you get a lot of that kitschy kind of stuff. So I was I produced for him and I did a lot of on air bits for that. And then I did uh, occasional overnights as well. Good for there you. you go. It was fun. Then but it he got ran to the, screaming. It ran well. It got to the point where I I started bartending and learning how to bartend on the side because yeah. it was to you make were it like I said making more money doing that. I was. <laughs> I was. And there was a line of people around the corner ready to take my job at the radio station, you know, yeah. and I mean not realizing how demanding it was, but it was one of my favorite, you know, up to that point in my life it was my favorite job that I ever had because talk about, you know, romanticizing a career. Yeah. You're in New York, you're doing this thing and you know that you're you're a part of something bigger than yourself. And it is romantic because because I was struggling and I one day I'm going to get to this position, but then I, you know, Money spoke, and well, I you started, meet a started. lot of weirdos too. Yeah, don't you? Well, Every yeah, once in a while, totally yeah. You never know who you're going to come across, yeah. especially <laughs> morning radio. Yeah. There's people with all kind Neurotic. of issues and eccentricities, oh. and you don't really get to find out about them until you start talking to them on a regular basis. <laughs> and yeah, you learn a lot, right, Brian? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah we're yeah. some characters. There's yeah. no question. It's some of the most interesting people I've known have yep. been on-air people. Some of the most the disconcerting truth. people I've met have been on-air people. Well, the wise words in this very interview were uh, get to know a bartender. I, yeah. I'm a believer in that. And I love the concept of this book. It is shaped like an LP because the concept is your favorite albums being inspirations for cocktails that, that you invented. A lot of trial and error, I imagine, even for someone who's yeah. experienced as you. Yeah, I mean, there's always trial and error. There's a lot of times, I mean, forget about the, the recipes for the book. Uh, just making cocktails in general for a new menu that is coming out of your restaurant or your bar or just for fun, sometimes something will sound fantastic on paper. You're like, nailed it. All I have to do is make it. And then you make it, and it's terrible because there's just maybe a quarter ounce too much or too little so of one ingredient, and you just have to tweak it ever so. So for this... It's always been a way that I've been, you know, inspired myself is over cocktails uh, or over albums, making cocktails inspired by them. It's always been something that's really been kind of a fun way for me to get into into that zone, so to speak. Um, so I had a couple out of the gate and it kind of evolved from there. Well, I want to start. I just picked out some that that really jumped out at me. And mm-hmm. the thing about punk rock is there are bands in here that I've heard of but haven't listened to yet because mm-hmm. there's so much. And I'm older than you, so my point of reference is going to be different. But uh, this is one that we definitely can agree on. The Great Circle Jerks from Los Angeles. Yeah. Keith Morris out in front of this band. This would have been like 1980, 81. Um, the songs are all about 40 seconds long. <laughs> the, the longest songs on a Circle Jerks album are like a minute, except for the melody. You know, the Golden Shower of Hits. That was their epic length yeah. tribute to 70s pop. 
But uh, definitely, if there's a song that you don't like, it'll be over in about 40 seconds, and then you're on to the next one. And that's one album in there. So I have my mom included and um, some family members of mine that were really excited to support me with this book. And I had to warn them, guys, there's a couple albums in there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Circle Jerks is not for polite company, but but it's... What a great band. I finally got to see them at South by Southwest, like in 2009. Oh, it was so great. I don't care how old they all were and are. Yeah. It was, uh, I couldn't keep up with them. Well, what's cool about that is that Keith, I spoke to Keith directly with that, and he gave me the okay. So I wanted to get permission oh, from, great, from all the bands. that's great, because I know he doesn't drink anymore. He doesn't. So. He doesn't. There's, there's a few bands in there that don't drink, and... I went to everybody, you know, Henry okay. Rollins that doesn't drink. Yeah, he's Obviously, never had. He's never, you know, and I wanted to make sure it was okay. And, you know, and they're like, absolutely, go for it. Be, really? Awesome. Even Minor Threat? Minor Threat. But, so the, the deal with Minor Threat was I did a low-proof cocktail. Okay. But they were cool with it. No they're, kidding. They're, they're like, they literally it. wrote a song called Straight Edge about not doing any drugs or drink when they were yeah. teenagers. I mean, it's one of their more famous songs. I thought, I thought yeah, I know. And, they, I mean, they were a huge part of that movement. And I thought that it would be kind of a fun thing to have them in the book it would get yeah. people kind of like talking about it uh and, and it has people have gotten a kick out of it like how did, how was minor threat in this book how did you get that like that's great they, they gave me the okay well so I, i'm glad it. you asked henry's permission first because he's really scary when he's in a bad mood <laughs> i interviewed him when he was in a bad mood once it was yeah i well, thought he was gonna he was, he was gonna person. grab me and <laughs> twist my head off he could it. and i was uh, that's yeah. that's a very real concern he was one of the first people i reached out to and uh it was funny. He got back to me. This was via email. And he said, you don't even have to ask permission. I write, I write books all the time about people that I know are, are musicians. And, and I don't ever ask permission. I was like, yeah, you're Henry Rollins. Yeah, I'm you know, ask you're like, like, you, you, <laughs> you can do whatever you want. That's awesome. Well, we'll get to his in, in a moment then. Uh, but I want to start with the Circle Jerks one because I'm such a huge fan of theirs. Uh, so what, it's called the Standard Bearer. Which I think that they kind of, they kind of are, uh, you know, the, the yeah. Standard Bearer. So... That's just something that I that I wanted to do. I wanted to do something that was, I felt, not over the top and super. I, I mean, this is kind of a theme, I guess you could say, about any of the bands. I didn't want to do anything that was really too pretty. Yeah. You know what I mean? And something, the, the inspiration for that was something that I could see myself sipping on at one of their shows if I was sitting in the back. Because I'm like, I'm an old punk now. You know what I mean? I don't get up, I don't get up to the front anymore. Right. So, um, you know, I didn't want it to be super fruity, super sweet. Wanted to be well balanced, and just something that would you know that I can see myself having with a beer ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. So you garnish it with a dehydrated apple slice. Yeah, you know you got the dehydrated punk rocker. Well, you know, (laughs) ultimately at the end of the day, you got to do something for the garnish, right? For some of them. But yeah. That's that's really imaginative. The irony was not lost on me as I'm in my kitchen with the dehydrator and I'm like you know listening to you know Bad Religion or whatever. Jay Roddy is an important artist for this radio station. And uh, he's such a nice guy. Have you ever met him? Just spoken, uh, you know, via the social media. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you ever have a chance to make this drink for him, he'll yeah. appreciate it. He's a great guy. He seems like it. What, what, uh, what is the inspiration here? So he's got a song on the album, um, Marigold, which is my, fa- my favorite on that album. And I wanted to do something that I kind of infuse Marigolds or Mums into a drink uh, a big theme with the Day of the Dead is uh, using marigolds as part of the decor and the way they pay tribute. So I, I call it La Maravilla, and uh, I wanted to get a little weird with this one. So it's kind of a riff on a margarita. That's the base the base of the inspiration, but with the sweet roasted corn cordial in there is something that I think uh, it was just weird enough. I had to get weird with some of these cocktails and make them really kind of stand out a little bit. A roasted well. sweet corn. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that? I, I, you know, well, I mean, there's there's some in things where like you, you've you've got to go all in. You're roasting. And two you have ears. to obviously, this is something you can't buy. You got to make it you yourself. Gotta, you got to yeah. roast two ears of corn over an open flame. And, I mean, you're 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 you're, you're, you're in. Hey, here's how to make a sweet corn cordial: roast two ears of sweet corn over an open flame. There you go. Boom. Then but, remove the kernels and add equal parts water, roasted corn kernels, and sugar to a saucepan. Let the contents of the pan sit at medium, occasionally stirring until the sugar completely dissolves. Let cool and strain into a separate that, bottle. That's commitment. That's commitment. It, it, it is. So you do, it, you do it to where you can batch a bunch of them in a row. It's a yeah. special occasion kind of cocktail or whatever. It's not something you can just whip up at your bar on a whim. But if you do the prep work ahead of time, 
you could put this on a bar's menu or you could serve it for a special event. It is a lot of work, but you know, if I'm writing my first cocktail book, I wanted to have some fun stuff in there and some special stuff. Can you, know, you describe the flavor of this, how it turned out? It's so interesting. It's, it's really nice. So it's, it's got, it's not overly sweet at all. And you get that roasty, the natural sweetness, put a little bit of sugar in with the corn, but like it's this natural sweetness from the corn and it's, it's, it's earthy. It's subtly sweet. Um, it's got a really nice mouthfeel to it, and uh, it's very, very drinkable. It sounds fascinating. I don't even know how you come up with that <laughs> roasting corn to make a, a drink. I'm that's, telling you, man, that's he, so makes, creative. he makes magic. We've, we've, uh, you know, we, we didn't get, I was telling you about the, the, I'm not a bartender competition, and he was my mentor. Yeah. He was my, he was my coach. I hope that that actually happens. And we were on, on our way to, I'm sure, creating to glory. the winner. I mean, there was a we victory. I can't, I can't remember what the name of it was, but we had some sort of crazy good name for it. It was, uh, it was, and it was. I have them all written. I have them all. Yeah, jotted, yeah. We, I got, still got all yeah, the notes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, hopefully that ends up happening. It got canceled because of the pandemic, because of, COVID, of course. Because of COVID, yeah. But if that, if that picks back up, uh, uh, I look forward to doing that. But with we you. were going to be, we were going to, we were going to be a threat. We we're going to win it. <laughs> Speaking threat. of threats, yeah. And we we mentioned them a few minutes ago. Minor Nicely threat. Done. They're. Minor Threat's hook was that they were, quote, unquote, straight edge. Mm -hmm. And th they were active like 80, 81. It was a very brief period of time. It's a blip. And then they evolved into the band Fugazi, which definitely had more flavors to it. Mm -hmm. um, but their thing was, hey, we're, we're kids, we're punk rock kids, but we don't do drugs and we don't drink. And we don't smoke, we don't do any of that stuff. Right. We're straight edge, and they had a song called Straight Edge. That's why I'm really surprised to see them in the book, and then you explain that you got their permission. Did you talk to Ian about I, this? I, I went through their label, uh -huh. Discord, and they got, they, you know, went talk to Ian, and you got the okay, ultimately. It was a little bit of back and forth, and it took some convincing. It wasn't just an immediate okay, but I was like, listen, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make it like a low proof cocktail. I'm gonna like pay tribute to you guys. You know, I wanna do it respectfully. And, 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 you know, and after a few emails back and forth, they're like, let's do it. He's in. He's into it. Um, but like I said, I thought it would be, a, I, I, I love this band. I'm not straight edge, but I love this band. And I love, I love to, you know, make a good cocktail and enjoy a good cocktail. And th these are my kind of worlds coming together a little bit, you know. And it's still a way to pay tribute to them in a way that I know how to do it. Okay, so when you set about to make a low-proof cocktail, you, you want it to be satisfying, don't mm -hmm. So how did you go about that? Well, there's... It's interesting because there's a huge boom right now uh, with low proof cocktails. And I, I, I prefer, you know, I don't like the term non-alcoholic cocktail. And me and some of my friends all agree on this is because it sounds like you're not getting the same experience. You're getting less than low proof cocktail because it's, it's or a zero proof cocktail uh -huh. for that matter. Um, I like to word it that way because there's a real art form to it. There's something that people are really craving now, whether it's for one of the many reasons that you would want to drink a lower zero proof cocktail. And I was thinking, okay, Manhattan-esque type of cocktail, but I went less than a, an ounce of all of the ingredients. So there's less than an ounce of whiskey in it. Traditionally, you're gonna have two ounces in a Manhattan and the rest of it is the vermouth. So I use three different styles of fortified wine in that to kind of balance out the flavor and give it, give it a sweetness, give it a little bit of a, of a dry depth to the cocktail as well. And uh, the result is something really nice. I mean, you can, and the beauty is it, it, it's so low in alcohol, but you get three ounces of alcohol or of liquid in the, in the drink itself. So you can drink a few of them, make a night of it, and you're going to feel just fine. Do you have any uh, higher test things in here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What would be the one that has the, is it the, the one you're going to make us? The one I'm going to make today for you is a little bit higher proof, yeah. <laughs> Lucero. And I'm so glad you discovered them. As you said, as a punk rock kid, they're more of like an alt country, but with a punk rock kick to them. They're part of that community, even yeah. though they're not, it's not punk music. Yeah, well, yeah oh, exactly. But if you talk to them, they're like, they are, they are total lifers. Yeah. I mean, those guys are, are a bit rough around the edges. And you go to their shows and the beer is flying through the air, at least the ones I've seen. Every, like people throw their beer in the air. Every show. I remember yeah. the first time I went to one with, uh, it wasn't my first show, it was my friend's first show, and a group of us went and he didn't know what was going on. He was getting mad that everybody's flinging beer. I'm like, buddy, you just got to go with it. Yeah. I throw the beer back. That's part of, it's, it's always during, like, Tears Don't Matter Much during their set. It's always during that song for some reason. And the beer just starts flying, and you know, you just know you're just gonna have to take a shower after the show. Yeah, That's the way it is. Don't make plans afterward. 
All right. Let so me see some of the ingredients that are coming up. Oh, yeah. There you go. Noon yeah. as dark as midnight is the Lucero cocktail that you're going to make for us. Yes, sir. Uh, you set it up any way you want. So uh, obviously, if it's Lucero, it's got to be whiskey based or yeah. bourbon based. Oh, yeah. So we're we're doing we're doing Woodford with this, and um, it is a, a big, rich, boozy sipper. Yeah, this is something that you're it's going to last you for a minute. Um, it's boozy. It's got a little bit of sweetness to balance out the spice and the kick. And overall, it's just a really nice, smooth, drinkable cocktail, despite the fact that it is. Quite strong. That's a good tip, right? Oh, with the real maple syrup in there? Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little tiny bit. That's, that's that, when you think about it, it makes sense because if you buy like real Vermont maple syrup, if you've never had that before, it it pours out surprisingly liquidy as mm-hmm. opposed to like this goo that you get at, at the, the fake maple syrup. The, right? and the fl- the fl- exactly. So the flavor is a little different as well. Yeah. Right? And it is, it's a thinner liquid that dissolves more easily in the cocktail. Yeah. So it's not like, so you wouldn't use straight honey for something. You would make a honey syrup. So it's a little bit lighter, a little bit yeah. thinner. Same thing in this case. Yeah. Okay. Trust me, I, I, I've seen the man work. I've, I've hung out with him. Those, he's got 0.25. I mean, follow needs, the it, recipe. It, it is 0.25. It has to be 0.25. It, he's got it down. There's a couple in there that's like just a bar spoon. Just yeah. a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were doing the, the, the with the bitters the, with the bitter shake. Yeah. You, were, you showed me the the technique for the right. how, to, how to get it in and there, not too much. Just like commit, the, boom, 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 boom. And you'll note on this picture the uh, array of Newport Music Hall ticket stubs and so forth. You're a ticket saver. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that, that was a fun one. So I, I did that one. Uh, who did these picture? Who took the pictures? I did actually. You took oh, all the photos. Awesome. Yeah, I took the I lo- photos and the clothespin. Holding the dehydrated yeah. apple on there. I thought, Which I, one is this? This that's is for uh, hot, water hot water music. music. Yeah. I thought that'd be a fun nod. So, I had the one already that I did for Chuck Reagan. I'm a big fan of hot water music. Big yeah. fan of Chuck Reagan, and he's a big he's a big fisher. He's a hunter. He's in all that stuff. So that I wanted to kind of do that at least for the hot water music cocktail, where you know the clothespin, kind of a nod to that that country lifestyle with you know the uh, the imagery on the glassware itself. I thought it'd be kind of fun. Yeah. The the pheasants. The here. pheasants. Yeah. yeah. That's one of my favorite glasses. <laughs> oh, I noticed throughout the book you have various various um, flavors of bitters throughout the, mm-hmm. the book as well. I mean, not just the standard just bitters. It's amazing bitter. how many different yeah, kinds you can you know you can Does buy. Does that really or make. change the complexity of a cocktail for you? So much, so much. Whether it's a bitter uh, that is just a traditional Angostura aromatic bitters, or you do something that's a smoked cinnamon, or you do lemon toasted almond i mean the, the possibilities are go on and on and on and it, it changes you can change a traditional old-fashioned to an entirely different tasting drink just by using a, a certain style of bitters, bitters. Or, or sugar for that matter so we're simple syrup so uh where can we now that uh we're getting vaccinated and we're, we're wanting to go out again where can we find you yeah so uh you, i'm gonna be at rye river social uh in grandview and uh, I'm gonna be there uh, full time. I'm the, the bar lead there with an amazing cast. Uh, Nate Howes, the, the beverage director there. Uh, it, we just have an amazing group of people that's gonna be there. So I, I look forward to everybody coming out and uh, yeah, having some cocktails. I'll see you at the bar. Oh, I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> Sounds good. If We've Hubbard, been talking about going out and having cocktails. If Hubbard yeah, is mixing them and pouring them, I'm present. My man, I appreciate that. And I'm just going to sit there and listen to you guys tell stories. That's all <laughs> I'm going to do. The no fascinating of lives of Dino Tabrotis and Jesse Hubbard. Jesse's got some stories to tell. I'm not done with them yet. He's coming back on Whiskey Business. Oh, we good. Still have more, we still have more to talk about. Oh, Looking great. forward to that. So, yeah. um, he'll be back. He's been a frequent flyer on our show. So we're looking forward to having him back there as well. Always a pleasure, my friend. Well, if you ever want to do this again, there are a billion other great punk rock records we could talk about punk rock all day and all night for sure i'm working oh. on actually volume two right now oh great yeah see i love it it can't be contained in one book <laughs> no it cannot and this is out now in biblio publishing biblio publishing.com all right we are going to set the table up and, and you're going to make us a cocktail i also right want to now. throw him some props too it was just picked uh, liquor.com just also gave him a nod as well and put it in there in their spring collection as a as 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 a book to look for and note as well thanks thanks for mentioning that man yeah i'm really i was really excited about that you yeah 
So yeah, that's, that's awesome. Well, I'm excited for anybody doing anything interesting here in our town because uh, there's so many creative people around. I mean, the, the variety of music that you can find here, it's like something for every taste. And, and we have people doing all kinds of interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm glad to be able to, to talk to you today about punk rock and cocktails and volume two is coming. And that's exciting. I, I love it. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, yes. I said the more the merrier. Let's, let's get out there and show Columbus off. I'm just honored to be a part of uh, the people who are trying to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, well, let's get you to work then. <laughs> let's do it. It's Brian's first.